So this set of slides is going to dig into uh, the, the structure of the uh, uh, scenario directories that define uh, all the config files and the uh, and the parts that define uh, scenarios in core. Uh, if you uh, when you're when you when you're not running a scenario, you can uh, right click on a node in core and bring up the services menu. And depending on the version of core that you have, this will look slightly different. The, the number and types of services tend to vary a little bit. Um, but, <coughs> but essentially what this is doing is it's, it's telling uh, core, you know, what processes uh, are going to get run on a particular node. Uh, you know, what routing protocols is, is IP forwarding at, you know, going to be on. Uh, you can turn on, an, in, in this one, we have an SSH server turned on. And then we have this user-defined mechanism, uh, user-defined service, which is the one that, that I patch into in order to start ION. Um, I could have written uh, ION as a separate sort of one of these uh, services and, and fixed it to start up that way. Uh, but instead, I chose. I just chose to patch into the user defined service, uh, and in particular, that that insulates me a little bit from uh, from changes that happen to the service interface as as core progresses, uh, since it, it is still actively under development. Uh, so there's a there's a, a user defined service uh, for each one of the nodes, and here you can sort of see in the background that this was. <laughs> Uh, this was a screenshot taken on a different version of core, uh, which had a different set of services defined for it. Um, but we talked before about uh, you know having a, having uh, certain directories that were uh, that are private to the individual nodes within core. Uh, so what what the user defined service that uh, that I have set up for the the DTN dev kit scenarios as well as the, the class scenarios, it creates a private directory for uh, var ion. A uh, place for ION to store uh, store its own files. It defines this setup.sh script uh, that is going to get used to kick off uh, node configuration and starting ION. Uh, and it sets the uh, it sets the, a startup command that is invoked on the node. And that startup command really just runs uh, runs the script. Uh, that script then reaches back to a, a common location where the into the directory where the .imn file that defines the scenario is uh, and runs, uh, assumes that there's something there called general setup.sh <coughs> and runs that. Uh, just some screenshots of, of how that stuff is set up uh, in uh, when, when you start looking at the, the, uh, uh, the user-defined service, there are these three tabs across the top. So there's a, a, a files tab and this one is just saying that when when core instantiates this node, it's going to it's going to generate a file called setup.sh. It's going to have these contents, and and really again, all it's doing is trying to figure out how to run this general setup.sh file uh, from the from the session directory. The in directories here we say what's what's going to be private, and there we made var ion private. Uh, so that each one of the nodes gets their own definition of what is slash var slash ion. Uh, and then finally in the startup commands, uh, we tell it that we want to run this setup.sh that we defined over here. This is, is how sort of the directory structure for how all of that is set up. Um, so in like uh, underneath the dev kit and it's similar for the, uh, for the, the class scenarios. There's a common directory that's got things like this general setup.sh, a node setup. This is uh, the core ion config is, is what's starting ion. And then each one of the scenarios gets its own directory uh, that has like the, the scenarios IMN file. It's got a link over into the general setup.sh because those uh, I, uh, all want to be the same. And then there's information uh, that is either common, like uh, uh, again a link over into core ion config.sh. There's some uh, some general parameters uh, and, and node setup.sh. This is all just bootstrapping uh, in order to get the link up. 
there's the, the config directory underneath the scenario. Uh, that's got like all of the IONRC and BPRC, et cetera, files uh, for all the nodes, uh, as well as this contacts.ionrc file, which, which I use as uh, common uh, to all the nodes. Uh, in, in, in general, uh, the, the contacts file or the, con the, the contact plan uh, might be different for different nodes. Uh, generally, I want it to all be the same, so I put all I pull all of that out uh, into one place so that I don't have a, uh, a configuration and consistency problem there. Um, and then there are a number of directories, uh, one for each of the nodes in the scenario, uh, and there are subdirectories under there for things uh, like this node params.sh we talked about a little bit before. Uh, that's just got some uh, some shell variables that help the rest of the machinery get that node up and started. There's a CG, there, there, there can be a cg2prefs.py file in there that uh, those files are used to uh, sort of help control the what information gets displayed on the uh, the contact graph visualization. So you can you can use it I think to override the names of links uh, so that you know instead of you know just one to two you can call it something else. Uh, and you can also suppress some of the links if, for instance, if you've got a bunch of uh, links that are you know hardwired up on the ground and they're always available, and you just don't want to show those in the in the in the graph that you're looking at, uh, you can pull that out. Um, and then there's a, a node-specific setup.sh file that sits down in there, and that's the thing that do things like starting up bping or CFTP transfers or the image transfer. So if you want to go, and, and probably we should go and at least look in the CFTP one, uh, because that one's a little, you know, CFTP is common enough, and, and it's a little bit special how to how to cause CFTP to start up. Um, uh, you can, I think, you can read this on your own. This is stuff that we've already talked about. Um, also, we talked before about this control network. All, all the scenarios have a, a control network for communicating between the host and the virtual nodes, and it's 192, 168, 250. Um, and, and that's what's used, in fact, uh, in order to uh, start the, the, a lot of the GUI stuff that, that's in there. Um, and there's also there are also some startup and shutdown hooks that live in the uh, in the .imn file uh, that are used to like kill off uh, uh, SSH sessions and the and all the visualization and, and things like that. Uh, so the things are structured the way they are so that the scenario files are sort of as portable as I can make them, uh, meaning you can take them and move them. Uh, you can move them around as long as the uh, as long as the links to the things that are in the common directory stay uh, uh, stay working, um, you can move them to you know different uh, instances of core. You can move them around. Uh, there there is a gotcha in there, in that if you have a scenario that has mobility, uh, the mobility script uh, that defines how nodes move is defined as as part of the, the wireless network definition. Uh, and so the, in particular, the location of that mobility script is stored in the .imn file for the scenario, and it's stored as a, 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 full, uh, a full path name. It's not relative to the IMN file. It really is you know, a full path name starting at root uh, and going down there. So that piece is not particularly portable in that if you take a scenario, uh, if you take a scenario direct to the directory with a scenario that has mobility and move it somewhere else, uh, as, long as, as long as it can still get at the IMN file uh, from in its original location, it'll, it'll continue to work. Uh, but if you move it like to a different machine or if you move the directory instead of just copying it uh, and, and the IMN file that's in that hard-coded path uh, is no longer available, then everything else will work, but mobility. Nothing is uh, nothing will move when you start things, um, uh, and that's part of the way that Core does its 
uh, processing of IMN files. Uh, it, it doesn't do file globbing or variable substitution uh, or anything on that path name. Um, and, and background images. So in, in the uh, scenario 2A constant, where we had the scenario that had the black background with Earth on the left and Mars over on the right, um, uh, background images are, are similarly their full paths and there's not not much I can do about making those more portable or at least I haven't figured out how to do it <clears throat> um, if you if you want to investigate core and, and leverage the uh, DTN uh, the like the dev kit startup scripts uh, again at its at its base core doesn't know anything about ion um, you know the the dev kit scripts are invoked uh, through that user-defined service, uh, and without those, you'll have to sort of do all the setup and starting of the ION nodes by hand. Um, the, the various node directories in a scenario, uh, again, if I back up here, uh, that's these directories that, are, that you'll typically see as you know, N1, N2, N3. Um, uh, they need to be named to correspond to the node names in the .imn file. You can use things other than node 1, node 2, node 3. You can call them spacecraft and ground station. I don't know what it'll do if you have spaces in the names. Um, but it'll certainly, uh, it'll certainly make uh, the, the integration that I have with Core more uh, exciting because you then have to have spaces in these names, uh, which you can do, but it's going to get confusing right quick. Uh, and, and then finally, you know, the, the, the dev kit scripts all assume that the file structure from, from the slide we're talking about above. So they, they, they assume that there is, in particular, that there is a common directory that is one up uh, and then back down into common from, uh, from the scenario script directory. So if you want to move them, uh, if you want to move them somewhere else, you'll need to, that's something to watch out for. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, the node specific setup.sh. Let's go look at the node specific setup.sh uh, for the CFDP scenario. Uh, I think I can probably do that. Yeah, sure. Um, core configs NASA DTN dev kit uh, base CFTP. Uh, and there, the, there were two parts. There's, a, there's the CFTP sender and the CFTP receiver. Um, let's see. Uh, node 4, I think, is the sender. Yeah, so let's look at uh, node specific setup. Uh, okay, and so all it's going to do, uh, it runs uh, again. It's assuming that there's this common directory that is one up from where the scenario is, and it's going to run CFDP put loop. Uh, and I suspect That if we look here, uh, so this one actually isn't uh, isn't doing anything about uh, about receive. Oh, because it's node two would be the receiver. Sorry. Uh, let's look in node two, node specific setup dot sh. Uh, right, and 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 it's running the script that's up in common. So let's go up into common. Uh, so here we are in the, the base CFDP directory, and if I just do cd dot dot says common, uh, then you can't see it, but over to the right, uh, well, let's do this way, uh, CFDP put loop, okay, you know, CFDP put with message, uh, cat CFDP put with message, So really, uh, what's happening here 
is uh, we're going to generate a bunch of commands uh, and then we're going to uh, uh, you know cause a file to get sent there. So we're going to generate a bunch of commands into a file. We're going to cat that file. We're going to pipe that through uh, CFDP test, which is the uh, the application that's actually going to invoke CFDP and cause it to send things, uh, and then we're going to dump that into into something that out. So the uh, the the commands that get sent are uh, these actually here. Um, we're going to remove any existing file at the destination. Uh, we're going to send this file, uh, and so these are the things. Uh, that are that are causing C that are sort of building up the command set for a CFDP test, and the ampersand I think is probably send CFDP. Can I do a man on CFDP test? Yes. Uh, and so here, this will tell you about what the uh, what the commands uh, the, the syntax for that file name is. Um, so you do things like set the destination CFDP entity ID. We haven't talked a lot about that. I think Scott will probably mention it in uh, in the lecture slides. Uh, but Ion really wants to reuse a lot of the identifiers uh, that are floating around. So, you know, that for instance, there is a node ID for bundle protocol. There's a CFTP uh, engine or CFTP entity ID that you see referenced uh, referenced here. There's an LTP engine ID. Uh, Ion will uh, assumes that all of those things are the same, uh, so that if you are on bundle protocol node four, that really wants to be uh, uh, CFDP entity ID four, as well as LTP engine ID four. Um, so that's how you can uh, that's how you know sort of what to set your your destination CFDP entity ID to be. Um, and then the rest of this you can you can walk through uh, setting the lifetime doing various things uh, and then eventually we'll get down to uh, ampersand which was the send command now uh, typically what you want to do is you you really want to run uh, CFTP test uh, at the uh, uh, at the receiver as well so if we can't watch receive CFTP, uh, you know, here uh, we're going to be, this is just doing a whole bunch of things with uh, date stamps. Um, uh, and looking for a CFTP message that comes in. Um, and Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, so I think this is just looking for, uh, for this. What I'm looking for here is, uh, something running at the receiver to actually process the the messages to the receiver uh, that CFTP is willing to spit out. Um, maybe that was hiding over here, uh, in. Maybe not. Uh, so uh, without that, what uh, what can happen is if you run uh, if you run enough things through CFDP, then uh, the the messages to the to the receivers uh, can start piling up a little bit. Uh, but here we're only going to send a few things, so it really isn't much of a uh, much of a problem. 